Hello everyone, welcome to this new video in which we'll keep generating our map. We've seen how to do the sketch of these continents, and now we're going to follow with the different techniques this program offers to make a well-defined shape. So the first thing we'll do is to organize these layers. We have layer 3, which was the original continent, so we'll rename it to supercontinent. We have layer 4, which was the tectonic plates. the arrows, and a continent which we can actually take out of the group now. So let's take it out and we delete the group. We lower the opacity for the tectonic lines and we can also hide the arrows Okay, the next step is as follows. Let's duplicate the continent layer, hide the previous one, and now we're going to take this layer and paint it black. Okay, like this. Once we've done this, we're going to use the quick selection tool and we're going to select all these parts. Okay, so make sure it's on addition, so you add to the selection. And once we have all the selections added, let's go to filter, render, clouds, which will result in this effect. Now, with the same layer selected, let's hit the Adjustment Layer Creation button and select Threshold. When we hit that option, this setup panel will show up in which we'll be able to raise or lower the quantity of blacks and whites. What we want to do now is using this effect we created to keep defining the shape of our continent. Besides, as you see, coasts and peninsulas are formed, which could perfectly be the sea level rising and floating some parts. So doing this system, we get some lakes, some coasts, or even some islands. You see? Notice all these depends on sea level. This factor is what we would get simulating the sea level. Okay? The highest peaks would be these ones, and the lowest would be racing. I would set it, for example, around, around here. And using this guide, we could do the shape of the continent properly. We select these two, right click and merge layers. So we get both elements in the same layer. Next in our list would be to create a new layer. And this time with a brush in red for now, with a size of about 10. Okay. Remember, we don't want to do a very precise map anyway. It's a world map, so the stroke has to be thick. We're not going to mimic the shape. So with a stroke size 8, I think it's okay. Yeah. So patiently, we'll contour all this map. We'll start from down here, for example. And we'll follow along like this. All right, once 
we've finished uh, with the contouring. We can now perfectly hide the previous layer. There it is. So we can see our line. The next step is to place the volcanoes that will form the volcanic islands. We can place three hot spots or more, which will be the points in which the volcanoes are formed. We can create then a new layer, pick a loud color, and in the crosses of the lines, we can form the hot spots, which will be the volcanoes or zones with volcanic activity, and hence volcanic islands or archipelagos will be formed. Okay? Let's lower opacity to, and let's create a new layer. And with a stroke line, like the one we used to do with the contouring of the continent, we'll zoom in and create in those points the islands that would be formed because of the volcanic activity. We can make one or more in each of those points we just painted. And patiently, and with the same color as the previous stroke and the same thickness, we'll keep forming randomly some kind of islands or group of islands. So here's one. And now we can perfectly make another one in another point. Let's fast forward this so we can see the results. See, we can add islands even where there's no volcanic activity. Notice that based on the references we took before, we have achieved some sharper coasts and more natural forms than what we did in the beginning. From here we can freely start generating different islands or archipelagos, okay? Following the logic and using the mesh we saw down here to do things with certain sense, to make islands where those plates or volcanic activity would form. Once we have the islands and all the contour done, we can delete unnecessary layers, and that is, we can take, for example, the layer with the volcanic spots and delete it. We can also delete this black layer, we don't need it anymore, and the green layer also. So we have the background lines layer, the supercontinent, which we can actually delete. And finally, we have what you see here. We have the islands and the continent separated in two layers, so we select both and merge layers in order to have it all together. And finally, we duplicate this new layer we created with the continents. All right, what we're going to do now is lock the transparent pixels in the layer using this icon here. We're going to select black as a color and we're going to paint the line black. Since we have the transparent pixels locked, we'll only paint on the lines. This can be done using several methods and this is one of them. Paint all the lines black, like this. Now we can delete the previous layer since it was just for security and now we'll name this layer, which will be continents. So we select this layer and using any selection tool, for example, the polygonal lasso, we're going to select some of the parts and with the move tool, we can finish placing all these islands, these archipelagos, Using Ctrl T, we can rotate them. And as you see, we can select anything we can see necessary and place it properly or better. You see with any selection tool, we can keep selecting. For example, this island here, I'm going to select it and I'm going to separate it in order to place it elsewhere. As you can see, we're not following what would be a professional cartography. So we're free to make our own things or make different things to doing it following accurately the movements of the tectonic plates. We can take one of these islands and rotate it or move it to a different position. We can also scale it and make it bigger or smaller. 
I'm going to take this island here and I'm going to move it closer to this continent here and rotate it in order to create a funnier or more attractive shape, one that's more playful. Well, now we're going to duplicate this layer and this will be the background of the continents. So we'll name it and we'll place it under the line. So we'll have the line on one layer and the background on a different one. Thus, this goes here. Okay, there it is. Using G, we select the Paint Bucket tool and we paint black, for example, all the white spaces. So let's get closer and with the G key, as I'm saying, the Paint Bucket, we keep clicking on them. You'll see that when you click, this light white border remains there. Okay, but if you double click, you'll feel all the surface. So we'll double click every white space in order to paint all these continents black. Okay? Once we've done this, if we select the line layer, let's place it down here. And if we double click it, the layer style window opens. If we enable stroke, we can click on color to pick one for the line. Besides, we can make the size of the stroke thicker or thinner. But we're going to cancel it because that's what we'll do in the next lesson. So let's go to File, Save As, and we save this file in order to use it in the next lesson, where we'll start seeing the color and the outline of these continents. So we save and we'll continue in the next lesson. See you in a bit.